On November 26, 2013, an adult sperm whale washed up on shore in the Faroe Islands, located north of the United Kingdom. The whale had been dead for a few days when, as marine biologist Bjarni Mikkelsen made a long incision along its belly, when its guts spilled out like leftover chili. What could be causing this stomach ache of cataclysmic proportions? Yeah, we, we couldn't show any video of the whale exploding. It, I mean, come on, it, it would have been demonetized, like, immediately. Incidentally, this video is also sponsored by Raid Channel Legends. We'll be talking about how whales and other animals might explode today. We'll try to keep the gore to a minimum, but know we will bring it up. Also, please don't approach any beached whales, or alive or otherwise. If you want to help with any relief efforts, consult local authorities on ways that you can help safely. And with that out of the way, let's get into it. There are actually more animals that explode than you'd think. Yes, there is a species of ant aptly named Colobopsis explodens, otherwise known as yellow goo ants, after the coloration of the substance that explodes from its body upon death. Unlike our whale corpse, however, this ant explodes on command. Soldier Colobopsis explodens will pull enemies in close when they sense they're losing the battle, and flex their muscles so violently that their skin ruptures, liberating a toxic liquid that will either incapacitate or kill their enemy. Now that's dedication to a cause. There was also an incident in Hamburg back in 2005, in which over 1,000 toad corpses with their abdomens burst were found in and around a pond in a local suburb. Authorities found that the water quality was no better or worse than any other pond. So, in an interview with NBC, Frank Muchman, a Berlin veterinarian involved in the cleanup, estimates that crows are to blame. He says that they learn quickly from watching other crows how to get the livers, and it appears that a bird pecks into the toad with its beak between the amphibian's chest and abdominal cavity, and the toad puffs itself up as a natural defense mechanism. But because the liver is missing and there's a hole in the toad's body, the blood vessels and lungs burst and the other organs ooze out. We have content warnings for a reason, folks. In the mid-20th century, the British Special Operations Executive cracked up a plan to use dead rats to sabotage German coal supply lines. Unlike the other animals we've been talking about, these rats don't blow up on their own. No, SOE's plan was to place dead rats full of plastic explosives in and around German coal burners so when workers disposed of them in their furnaces, the explosives would go off. But it wasn't completely futile as this discovery forced the German army to manually check every dead rat they disposed of. I don't want to think about what would happen if they used Rat Kings for that. Ooh, rat King? Does he have a crown? Mine does. You will join us. We are the unrelenting. We are the inexorable. We are... What the fu- These toads and the rats are dead, but they don't explode like whales sometimes do. The rats did explode, but that was because we essentially turned them into little rodent firecrackers. Oh no, it's the demon! A ties! <laughs> <laughs> All right there, Beals of Bud. Your ass is ash! Don't do it, Grill! If, if we attack him, we could, we could get flagged for hostile behavior! But that's my favorite kind of behavior! If only there was a way to create content without having to adhere to a system of constantly changing guidelines that ultimately determines whether or not that content is viable. Oh boy, it's it's this week's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends! What? A smash hit dark fantasy RPG? Impossible! Folks, have you played Raid Shadow Legends? I have. Let's get into it. What really stands out to me with Raid are the champions. Look at all these handsome boys and girls and lizards. I've spent a good chunk of time meticulously crafting their gear and attuning their sets, so dungeons are a brief Huh. Well, know what else is interesting about this game? You can sacrifice the characters you're disappointed with to the one true Lizard King. All glory to the Lizard King. The graphics on this game look too powerful. Surely you're measly found cat right? Shut your ignorant mouth. Ah. Raid is now supported on PC, so you can keep the fight going across multiple devices. What? No! Start your journey today and receive 100,000 silver and a free hex weaver. You'll find these extra rewards here in your inbox for the next 30 days only. Click on the link in this video's description to begin your journey. 
Raid Shadow Legends. It's a video game I like. Curse you and your fat intuition. Curse you! The whale in the Faroe Islands had been lying on the beach for around a week before it popped. So, maybe decomposition has something to do with it. There are five basic stages that animal matter goes through after death. Initial decay, putrefaction, black putrefaction, butric fermentation, and finally, dry decay. Initial decay isn't so bad, and it takes place from one to three days after death. From the outside, a deceased body won't look much different than a live body. But the bacteria that occupy the intestines are already hard at work consuming the vital organs they once lived inside. Putrefaction is where it starts to get icky, and occurs about four to 10 days after death. It's marked by the production of fluids and gases, like hydrogen sulfide, methane, cadaverine, and putrescine, which all smell a million kinds of horrible. Bodies in putrefaction begin to fill with gas. Next comes black putrefaction, around 10 to 20 days post-mortem. Now all those liquids that have been building up inside the body leak out into its surroundings, and it begins to deflate as it dries. The fourth step is fermentation, about 20 to 50 days in, which sees the corpse drying more and the bacteria that have been gestating on the body flourish and break down the flesh more and more, leaving an unnerving cheese-like scent. Last comes dry decay, which lasts from 50 days onward. The flesh at this point is almost gone or dried completely, and soon the only thing will be left are the bones. Now that we know the process of decomposition, we can begin to dissect why a dead whale might explode. As you remember, Bjarni Mikkelsen makes a long incision along the whale's belly, and boom. Now, can you guess which step in decomposition is at play with our whales? Bruce Mate, director of the Marine Biology Institute at Oregon State University, in an article for The Verge, argues that the explosion is most likely the result of a buildup of gases during putrefaction inside the creature. The idea is that a whale's blubber acts as a secondary balloon that holds in all those delicious postmortem gases, which otherwise would leak out through different orifices like the anus, resulting in a disgusting bloated whale corpse. At least we didn't find any plastic bags inside it too. Mate says that dead animals buoy up to the surface all the time, and they float there until the pressure is released through some weak point. And that the pressure release is sometimes slow and sometimes catastrophic. Obviously, this was one of those catastrophic times. The size of the animal will impact the violence of the reaction too. Mate continues saying that you don't get this type of exciting or dramatic response when you're looking at a squirrel roadkill or a raccoon along the road. But the same process is going on in the squirrel. It's just at a much smaller scale. The whale is basically a giant balloon, and its massive weight forces its leaky orifices closed so pressure can build up inside it until... Oh goodness. But why would anyone actually cut into a whale corpse like the one in the video? Well, likely it's because they know that this process of putrefaction is happening, and they mean to release those gases before they can build up to explosive levels. They could also be cutting up the whale in order to dispose of the body. You know, make it easier to carry. For example, there was an incident in Oregon, 1970, that saw a 45-ton whale wash up on shore. And the only option the locals could brainstorm to remove it from the beach was a cool 20 cases of dynamite. They even made a song about it. Now, the funny thing about exploding a 45-ton whale with 20 cases of dynamite is that you have significantly less control over the situation as you'd like. Local resident Walter Umenhofer's 1969 Oldsmobile took the brunt of the mistake after it was decimated by a 3-foot by 5-foot chunk of rotting whale blubber. Umenhofer remarks on the incident saying that, it was a neat car. I just got it from Dunham's, and it was a Regency. And I say the funny thing was their slogan was a whale of a deal. <clears throat> How would you propose we get rid of a beached whale? Grill made me a Twitter webpage a while back, so send me your ideas. So maybe those rats don't explode the same way that whales do, or yellow goo ants, but let's be honest. There aren't many other ways for an animal to explode that doesn't include humans you know, exploding them. I, I didn't even bring up Soviet anti-tank dogs or British cat bombs. We did that. That was a thing and I hate it. There are plenty of reasons to avoid dead whales or dead anything for that matter. 
From the smell to the bugs and harmful bacteria, pretty much everything involved is telling us to stay as far away as possible. But if that's not enough, how about we let explosions of dynamite and liquid decomposition be enough for us to leave corpses well enough alone? But one thing is for sure, it sure takes guts to cut into an exploding whale. Oh man, I wonder what it is. It almost seems like we got an array of sponsors lately. An array of Shadow Legends! <laughs> oh man. Okay. Okay, I guess I'll just stick to the normal one just in case you hated everything I did. Okay. 